that often we um, we assume that people cannot reason about these issues in ways that are relatively profound, um, but they're really pretty good instant learners, and they have available to them lots of other things that are not being summoned, they're not being recruited by the way that we talk about these issues. But one of the things that we test is we go back a week after exposure to a simplifying model and look at whether people are able to recall it, whether they are able to um, build upon it in their knowledge, and we're pretty much able to show that they can. So this goes to the question of an infrastructure of communicators that are able to be the legs for these new ways of thinking, that are able to export these frames. Um, because people can go back and forth. So if you think of what you just saw, and you think of a policy like broadband access, and you drop that into that first way of thinking, people are going to say, oh, you wouldn't want to do that in rural America. It's so quaint, and you would just destroy it. You know, it's, it's, they wouldn't want to do that. They, they don't want broadband access because it's so, um, uh, you know, it, it, they like to talk to each other. And if you dropped it in the second set of informants, what you would hear is, well, yeah, how could they possibly have economic development? How can they possibly be growing new businesses? How can they possibly be letting their kids be exposed to things uh, around the country and have full educational opportunities if they don't have broadband access? So you can see how these, these two pattern structures are going to literally eat the incoming information in a certain way, and why you would want to know which one sets up a better way of thinking. So in our work on structural racism, the values that keep coming up over and over again as strongly reorienting people to think about racism as embedded in structures are an idea about opportunity for all. And it's very important to have the for all, not just the opportunity. That this is about the country assuring that um, there is access uh, for all in America and that not to do so is a problem for the country as a whole. Um, ingenuity, Americans are willing to solve problems even when they don't cop to the problem in the first place. So if you say to people, you know, we really need to solve certain problems related even to um, uh, immigration, if you give them a viable solution, they're pretty much behind it. Prevention, which has been coming out of our latest round of, of work, and finally, fairness between places. And the simplifying model that we've tested and that we're now going back and trying to see if we can come up with some multiple versions of it is the prosperity grant. So here are the values. Opportunity for all, it emphasizes disparities and opportunities, future prosperity, and the interconnectedness of communities that leads to shared fate. Ingenuity, we talked about. Fairness between places locates the problem in the distribution system and requires systemic solutions to correct the inequity. So this is not the social justice fairness frame, which we tested the heck out of. We cannot get it to work for racial policies. It instantly defaults to an us versus them kind of thinking. But you can use the strongly embedded notion of fairness in that um, if they can see that the distribution system is askew. This is the um, simplified model that we've developed over time, and we're now working on um, with our linguist on iterating some different versions of it. Um, it's an access grid. It's an access grid that prevents the country from becoming prosperous. And you will see, it is, it is a structural racism explanation. But when it is located in a grid of access, when people are seeing that it is, um, uh, that, they, that people get plugged in or they are literally off the grid. It is not a psychological explanation of the problem. It is a structural. Uh, and so they don't default to issues of um, individual effort, uh, et cetera. It works because it's a concrete physical thing. It taps into something mechanistic we can understand. It creates systems thinking. It clarifies cause and effect, the processes that create the phenomenon in a new way. And it allows people to think in a different kind of way. So um, why would minority graduation rates be different? It might not be a problem of motivation. It might be a problem of access to a grid, a network of uh, uh, opportunities. 
So at the end of the day, we try to create a frame architecture. That's what Frank Gillian called the last paper he did on race, the architecture of a new race discourse. And, and this little ad from work that we did on global warming, I think, best shows that. So it telegraphs the values. Some mistakes are no big deal. Global warming isn't one of them, what we would call a responsible management kind of frame. You don't let the toast burn. Um, if you burn the toast, you can start over. You can't do that with the earth. By burning so much oil and coal, we put our children's future at risk. The explanation of how the problem is being constructed. The good news is solutions to global warming exist. We can cut car emissions, modernize power plants, and pursue clean energy sources. So the pictures are not the polar bear on the ice cap. They're not the haze over Los Angeles. They are telegraphing a solutions message, which is using that ingenuity uh, value. Um, they're assigning responsibility. Ask your elected officials to get to work on solutions. It's not saying, ask what each of you can do in your little home and then aggregate that. It's asking you to think about structural solutions. And here, this weird little ball is the uh, simplifying model that we developed for global warming because we found out that greenhouse gases meant nothing to anybody. Um, never in our focus groups, well, never. Maybe three times in 20 focus groups did people ever actually say greenhouse, which has been a hugely advantaged term in media. So if they're not saying it and they've been exposed to it, you know you have a problem. What we found out is people think that greenhouses are a nice place where plants grow if they think anything at all about greenhouses. So we created a different simplifying model, which is that global warming is caused by the blanket of carbon dioxide that surrounds the earth and traps in heat. So it explains the mechanism by which global warming happens. Not that it's hot cold, but that it is a trapping dynamic. And I'm doing this with my hands because you can see people actually take on that and go like this when they're talking about global warming once they've been exposed to the model. So this is the kind of thing that if we can arm people to go and talk to each other about these issues, people who are well-intentioned, people who want to engage with these kinds of issues, we can begin to challenge the bad parts of the swamp that are structured by their exposure to, to narratives that are not useful to us. And we can um, help them talk to their neighbors, colleagues, uh, in their workplaces, etc., about different ways of thinking about these problems. The problem we see that we're constantly up against is that because the stories, stories invent us, because the narratives are embedded in us, we tend to default to certain kinds of narratives. We ourselves tell stories about individual responsibility that focus on individuals without seeing that the structure of this narrative is recreating a world which is not the world um, that those of us in this room would like to see created. 